All right, everybody. Good morning on this January Sunday, and I welcome you into God's house. We are invited to the altar today, a place where we change our lives for salvation. Let's stand as the ringing of the bell calls us into God's house. Amen. As we continue to stand, just some things going on. We've got a little bit of uh, illnesses or flus or bugs. And I understand COVID is one, one way to say that, but there's a lot of different viruses going around. And both of our adult Sunday school teachers are under the weather today. So we are not going to have adult Sunday school today. Just note that. But we will be back next Sunday and we will have it. But we also lift up men. You're invited to the Firehouse Cafe on Tuesday morning, 7 a.m. Recovery ministry, always on Tuesday evening. Wednesday, the full uh, ministry. We have the elementary and the youth ministry. I will be out of town. There'll be no rock service, but all other ministries will be going on. So note that on Wednesday. And then Thursday, if you've ever wanted to learn to crochet, I mean this, if that's your thing. All right, yeah. I know Marsh is laughing because, you know, it's not my thing, but that's okay. That's okay. I have yet to meet too many people that would actually want to barefoot at my age, so that's okay. But if you want to crochet, I'm serious about that. That is going on this Thursday evening. Note at 6 p.m. It's just a great gathering in the fireside room. Everybody is welcome. Let's worship our Lord. We're invited to grace. We're invited to salvation, the excellence of God. And we do that by starting to sing the song, Holy Ground. We'll sing it through twice. Join with the words on the screen. <coughs> angels all around. Let us praise Jesus now. We are standing in his presence on holy standing on holy ground and I know that there are angels all around let us praise Jesus now of holy ground. Amen, and please be seated. One of the things that I always ask for us to do, and I think it's important as we invite ourselves to God's altar, is our statement of belief. Why are we coming forward? Why do we do this? We remind ourselves what we believe in, the Apostles' Creed. Let us recite that with truth and faith. Join me. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. 
Amen. At this time, I would invite our children, if they would come forward and help me with the children's message. Good morning, good morning, come on up. All right. Is this all that's coming? Okay. Now, we had a full day of events in Painesville yesterday, didn't we? Right? Rhea, did you go bowling in Painesville? I didn't think so. All right. Just checking. Gannon, did you wrestle yesterday? All right. Levi, you played basketball? All right. Jack, you had your first wrestling meet? And how did you do? You got that medal there? What does that mean to you? <laughs> Why do you like wearing it? What do you like about it? Did you have fun wrestling? Does it represent you having fun? Does it help you remind you you had fun? Right. Levi, did you have fun playing basketball? Yes. <laughs> yeah, you quite, you did. Gannon, did you enjoy wrestling yesterday? All right. Even with your eye a little bit? Huh? All right. <laughs> well, God wants us to have fun, doesn't he? Right? He likes it when you play basketball, when you wrestle, when you go bowling, when you celebrate a birthday with grandpa, a hundred years. He wants us to have fun, right? Yeah, why do you think that is? What do you think? Do you think it's because he loves us like mom and dad? even more than mom and dad. He wants you to have fun. He wants you to do it with God. Now, how do we have fun with God? Can we play basketball and have fun with God? Yeah. Yes, we can. Can we wrestle and have fun with God? Yeah. Does he want us to cheat when we play basketball? No, how do we have fun with God? Playing by the rules, right? Thanking each other, right? Helping each other. Be a team, right? Yeah. Isn't this the way it's supposed to work? That's how God wants us, right? Yeah. How can we be a team at home? There you go. Mom and Dad are listening right now. <laughs> how else can we be a team? Can we do our homework? Is that having fun? No, it's not having fun, isn't it? <laughs> oh, it is, Rhea. Okay, some have fun doing homework. I wasn't. I, that wasn't my fun. No, no. <laughs> Making cookies. Okay, Gannon, do you have fun doing homework? I didn't think so. Just thought I'd check. <laughs> okay, all these things we do, but we do it the way God wants us to do it, right? Thanking each other, play by the rules, helping each other when they get down, right? All right, let's pray. Lord, we thank you for fun. We thank you for fun days on the wrestling mats, the basketball court. I'm celebrating a hundred years with a, with a grandpa and a birthday, Lord. But we know that fun is what you want. But help us do it your way. Helping each other, lifting each other up, playing by the rules. And yes, Lord, even doing things sometimes that are not fun, but we know we need to do it. Our homework, cleaning our room. Yes, thank you, Lord. Thank you and let us have fun in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for helping me out, all of you. <laughs> As we continue to worship, always, I move to a time of prayer. As I do today, I just want to lift up a note from Kevin and Gloria Bruntlett. Uh, many of you know Evelyn Bruntlett, or maybe you don't. She's the mother of Kevin Bruntlett. She's been in a care center on the west side of the cities for some years now. She did pass away this week, and Gloria just has a note that she wants to read and to keep especially Kevin in family in prayer. Evelyn Bruntland, uh, mother of Kevin Bruntland, passed away on Thursday this past week at her care facility in Minneapolis. 
She had requested that her body go to the University of Minnesota Medical School for student study. Remember, she has a granddaughter who's in the medical field. A celebration of life will be held at a later date, and Evelyn was 97 years old. Just lift that up, and obviously lift that family in prayer. And I always lift up our prayer book, Margaret. Let's come to the Lord in prayer. Gracious Lord, as we come into your house, we are reminded we're standing on holy ground. As we come to your altar, we are reminded the presence of the Lord is in this place. And we have the opportunity of increasing, uh, growing deeper by choice into salvation with you. Help us do that, Lord, not out of guilt, but out of grace and desire for your excellence, Lord. We just lift that up. And that comes because of your demonstration of love, a willingness to become humanity, a willingness to be human in spite of your sinless concept and your sinless way of life even on earth. And yet you went to the cross and you said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Help us, help me with that, Lord. Help all of us. And then you said, why are you looking for the living amongst the dead? He is not here. He has risen, like he said. And you gave us the gift of resurrection and the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. That's the salvation we come to, Lord. And we thank you. We thank you in Jesus' name. And yes, Lord, as we come to you today, we lift up our desire to want healing. In whatever form we bring it, Lord, we're all perfections of working towards your holiness. And so we lift up our need for healing physically and emotionally. The names on our prayer book marker, the names on our hearts, ourselves included. And we pray for healing in Jesus' name, Lord. Lord, we lift up our mission statement to you. There are those in our world that are hoping for somebody in that friendship circle to have a God conversation with. It's not because we're better or worse. They just want somebody they can confide in. Help us be those who help each other grow in Christ, as our mission statement reminds us to. We lift that to you, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Lord, we lift our leaders to you today, our world to you. There's just things going on that, yes, they're, they're out of control. Um, some are re in the middle of an ice storm right now, Lord. Uh, some are recovering or battling the seriousness of COVID amongst other uh, viruses, Lord. And we have our leaders trying to figure this all out. In the midst of all of the stuff that is going on, Lord, we pray for them. Our president to our local government, some of our own, Lord. Let us be a nation that desires your will prayerfully, not out of judgment or wrath or one political party over the other, Lord, but just out of a nation that wants God's will. Can you help us with that? Help us choose that, Lord. And so from our president to our local government, we pray for that, including ourselves, in Jesus' name. Lord, we, we lift up the, 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 the need of a military presence and those defending us and protecting us. Thank you for them. Help us be grateful. We pray for their wisdom, their strength, and we pray for their safety as well as their spouses and their children. We have men and women serving in places like Kuwait City, Lord. 
uh, the state of Virginia, the National Guard, uh, full-time army, Lord, the reserves. Just lift them up. And we pray for them in Jesus' name. And Lord, if we live in Minnesota and the weather changes all the time, and yet the medical responders and the firefighters and the law enforcement, they're out there. Whether it's 15 below, whether it's snowing or the wind is blowing, or it's warm, they're out there. We hear a siren and we have become disciplined to pray. Keep us doing that. Help us be grateful for these men and women. Help us pray for their safety so they can return to their spouses after their duty, their shift, Lord. And help us pray for their strength and their wisdom. They need it. Protect them and thank you for them. We lift up our firefighters, our medical responders, and our law enforcement always, Lord, each day and covenant that in prayer. In Jesus' name. Lord, as we come to you, we celebrate that ministry of recovery. Grace Church supports that ministry. We lift up those who find that freedom from addiction to recovery, especially through salvation, Lord. And we thank you for the witness that they bring us. Lift them up and strengthen them always. And thank you for what they teach us, Lord, in Jesus' name. And as we come to you in prayer, Lord, we want to be guided to the altar. We're reminded of our creed, our statement of belief. But we also ask for the help and the wisdom of the Lord's Prayer. And so with the words on the screen, let's get the visual of those words. Let's pray it out loud because they speak to us. It's what Jesus taught us to pray. Let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. All right, as we continue to worship at this time, I'm going to invite Deanna to come forward. She is going to read from the book of Daniel. Uh, we are starting a new sermon series. We're going to be looking at living in the excellence of God. That's not to be arrogant, so please don't misread that. But God has everything for us, everything for us. And there is the capability of living in God's excellence. And so we're going to start looking at that. From the book of Daniel, Daniel was a teenager living in Judea in a time where Babylon was taking captive of the country. And he was selected to be on the king's court because of his gifts. And yet he brought his faith with him and grew in it. Now, you're going to be reading a scripture passage with a lot of Judaish and Hebrew names. I'll do my best. Please don't. Give her a chance, okay? <laughs> If you don't, if you don't even go there because we're going to ask you to come and read it. So just let her pronounce these names, okay? <laughs> Thank you, Deanna. Uh, the reading is from the book of Daniel, chapter 1, verses 1 through 7. Daniel taken to Babylon. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, Jehoiakim, king of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord gave Jeho Jehoiakim king of Judah, into his hand with some of the vessels of the house of God. And he brought them to the land of Shinar, to the house of his God, and placed the vessels in the treasury of his God. Then the king commanded Ashpenaz, his chief eunuch, to bring some of the people of Israel, both of the royal family <coughs> and of the nobility, youths without blemish of good appearance and skillful in all wisdom, endowed with knowledge, understanding, learning, and competent to stand in the king's palace and to teach them the literature and language of the Chaldeans. The king assigned them a daily portion of the food that the king ate and of the wine that he drank. They were to be educated for three years, and at the end of that time, they were to stand before the king. 
Among these were Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah of the tribe of Judah. And the chief of the eunuchs gave them names. Daniel he called Belteshazzar, Hananiah he called Shadrach, Mishael he called Meshach, and Azariah he called Abednego. Amen. Here ends the reading. Amen. And thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Deanna. I bet you're glad you signed up for this Sunday, didn't you? Aren't you? <laughs> oh, she looked at it this morning and says, what did I get into? Oh, thank you. We are looking at that theme, living in godly excellence. And again, I, I want to I phrase it in a way. It's like, well, we're not better than other people. If that's what we think we are, we're missing the point. We serve a God that is perfect in every sense of the word. We serve a God that is perfect in every sense of the word. And we are saved by grace. And as C.S. Lewis put it, a, a great author of the 1900s, a professor in England, we should be living like we have parties at the sea every single moment, yet we choose to live making mud pies in the slums. We are grateful. We are saved by grace. And whether we're like Daniel, which we're going to get into, who was one of these well-rounded individuals, or we're like ourselves, whoever we are, uh, dyslexic and all of the things we bring to the plate, we have the opportunity to live in godly excellence. I can remember when I would sit at the table during my high school years, I'd come home, and one of the things my mother was very, very, um, just, it was her thing. We ate dinner together as a family, whether I was racing on a ski team at night or whatever. And we'd sit at that table, and I always remember, say, Robert, that's what she called me, sit up. I don't want to sit up. I don't care. I'm your mother. Sit up. <laughs> Stand straight. Don't slouch. <laughs> your back is going to have to tell you that. And I'm like, okay. These little things, excellence, we can do this. And I'm going to look at it a little bit from the, from the backdrop of Daniel for these next several weeks. And today we're invited to that as we get a little invitation of what that looks like. We live in a, in a culture around us that changes all the time, man. I, I am part of a generation that used to go to the country and have meetings in person. But now we FaceTime somebody in India uh, right away. We just forget that it might be 3 o'clock in the morning when we FaceTime them. But we do it. Or we have a, a, a meeting by Zoom or all of that. It used to be that when I was traveling on a, on a mission trip, we honored the, the country's culture that we were in. I had a friend who was in a Zoom meeting about a year ago, and he was with somebody in the Far East, and they stopped the meeting because this person had a different faith of a different prayer time, and they honored the prayer time right in the middle of the Zoom meeting, which is fine. I get that. That's the culture we live in right now. And we are called to godly excellence. Not to show off or say we're better than everybody else, but we're called in the midst of godly excellence in all of that. And how do we do that? In Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, it says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed. <clears throat> I can remember when we were a young family. John was probably four, three, four or five years old, and we were heading to some meetings and St. Cloud, and our whole family was going that particular year, Kelly and John, and we stopped at a we, McDonald's for our lunch, I think it was in Monticello, on the way to these meetings in St. Cloud, and I didn't stand up and make a scene, we, we had our, our lunch there, and before we ate our lunch, we joined hands, and I didn't stand up and say, okay, Lord, everybody in the restaurant, we're going to pray, Lord, help these people, I didn't know, we just quietly in our little corner had prayer. Not a big deal. 
We thank God for the day and we thank God for safe travel and just providing. What I did not know was there was a senior citizen that was kind of cleaning the area. Didn't, wasn't on my radar screen. And he came over very tearfully when we were done. He didn't know who we were. And he just said, I don't know who you are, but don't you ever stop doing that as a family. Living in godly excellence. What does that mean? And we don't measure up all the time. I would love to share that story with you and we do that, but then watch me drive sometimes. Especially on Highway 23, you know, I've said it before, my pet peeve, I, I try to live in God's excellence. You're on Highway 23, you're going from uh, Richmond to Cold Spring and yeah, you both lanes and they're going like 50 and it's, I'm exaggerating a little bit. And the speed limit's 65 and you, you know, I wish I had a big plow right on the front of my, there, that would, no. That's not godly excellence. That's immaturity. Living in godly excellence. What does it look like? And Daniel gives us a perfect backdrop to kind of discipline ourselves. Are we going to be perfect? No, that's why this altar is labeled with grace. But we can work on it. We can work on it in the culture around us. And, and what, does that, what does that look like? Well, here's something that's really strong to me. As Deanna read for us, King Jehoiakim, he was a king called by God for the nation of Israel, and he was given that responsibility because God thought he had it, and I believe he did. But if you were to read First and Second Chronicles, and you would find the history of King Jehoiakim, from day one, he got selfish. He didn't want God. He wanted the power of the position. I think we can all kind of register in our mind some people we know that, you know, they don't spend a couple of years in that season. They spend their life in the power of the position. And it gets ugly. I'm not going to describe people. I, I can think of a person right away. The power of the position. If you read First and Second Chronicles, you read that King Jehoiakim had it all before him, all to follow God. He gave up God. He let the power of the position rule his life in the decisions of not living in the excellence of God. Look at this verse. It says it all. The Lord let King Jehoiakim, Judea, fall into his power. In other words, King Jehoiakim didn't stand a chance. He already gave up because he lost his soul and sold it to the devil of selfishness. And Judea fall into his power, King, ne King Nebuchadnezzar. And here's what's interesting, as well as some of the vassals of the house of God. You think, well, what's so big about that? I have some certain things to me that if someone broke into my church office and they wanted things of value, I would give them my wallet. I would give them the computer. Whatever. There's a Bible in my office on a bookshelf. It's been my Bible since I was ordained. It's ripped. It's got a sticker on it. It's got some issues with its longevity. But it's got notes in it. It's got highlights. I don't want to lose that Bible. Are you hearing me? There's too much importance in that Bible I do not want to lose. When you look at it, you think, this thing's shot. And it is. I wouldn't want them to take that Bible. The vassals are things that you and I have that have much value to our faith and very little monetary value, if any at all, to the world. And King Jehoiakim let the Ark of the Covenant, that's a case where you have the Ten Commandments, he let it go. And then look, let's finish reading this verse. These, King Jehoiakim and King Nebuchadnezzar, brought to the land of Shinar. Remember, these are the vassals. This is losing that one Bible of mine. And place those vassals in the treasury of his, and look at the lowercase g. Does that say it all? King Jehoiakim sold his soul to selfishness. And he let the keepsakes of God go into idols. 
This should explain to us the importance of bending but not breaking in our faith and not making a big deal about it. You know, not getting up in the restaurant and saying, everybody in the restaurant, we're going to pray now. And because I'm a Christian, I'm going to pray all of you need to be quiet. It's just taking time to know what's important in life. Choosing when to stand up. When to stand out. Choosing when to live the character. And that's hard to do all the time. We are not going to be perfect at this. Choosing when to live the character that the world is desperately crying out for. Choosing to live the character that the world is desperately crying out for. King Nebuchadnezzar was ruler of the land of Judea. He was from Babylon. He was a different country, but he was ruling it. And he wanted to influence the culture that was coming up from him. And so he sent his um, leaders out to look for men in, uh, well, obviously men. In those days, I don't appreciate this, but they do not give women the credit that women deserve plus. But in the Bible, it speaks of men. And he went looking for certain men that were of intelligence, physique, and put together well-rounded. Young men with physical defect, uh, without physical defect, and handsome, and versed in every branch of wisdom, endowed with knowledge and insight, <coughs> excuse me, competent to serve in the king's palace. And they were taught to be the literature and the language of the challenge. The challenge were their professors, their teachers. I look at that, and you look at that. Some of you, you're saying, oh, that, that and, I, and I know you're not trying to be, that. you could do that. I'm looking at him going, okay, without physical defect, okay, I'm gone there. Handsome, okay, didn't make that. Um, versed in every branch of wisdom, ooh, I definitely hit the low bar on that one. Endowed with knowledge, insight, uh, yeah, okay. So we're saying, well, pastor, this doesn't even imply to me. I wouldn't get picked for that. Don't go there. Do not sell yourself short. We all have gifts, every one of us. We're given those gifts by the Holy Spirit. The challenge is you and I have to develop those gifts. You with me? We have to develop those gifts. We want to wrestle. We start when we're young. If we enjoy it and we really appreciate it, we do it, we do it, we do it, we practice, we run, we do things we don't like. I remember when I was on the ski team for the high school and in the dry season in early November, we had to run up hills with ski boots on. I didn't like that. Still don't like that. When I was in grad school and coaching uh, the Alpine team for Jefferson High School, we ran up the hill with ski boots on. Don't like that. They didn't like that. They weren't very happy with their coach. But you have to do these things to develop these skills. We can go on and on and on with the skills that we are given. There's certain things that we enjoy to see a finished product, but getting through that product, some of those things, boy, I wish I didn't have this skill. Living in godly excellence. You know, that, that's where this is about. Would we have made that cut? I'm not even going to go there. there. You're missing the point. The point is we all have gifts. And we influence with those gifts. Are we parents? Yes. Guess who we influence? We are the biggest influencers on our children. Grandparents, we influence. Teachers, volunteers, we influence. Singing, playing the piano, we influence. We all influence. And we choose how to do that. Not only that, but standing out with appearance and knowledge. Simple things like cleanliness and hygiene and all of that. I remember one day, well, you could name a lot of days, but I remember one particular day, um, Kelly was still at home as I was getting dressed, and, and she looked at me with grace and smile and said, are, are you going out like that today? I didn't really understand that you put a pinstripe shirt with, it, did, it wasn't right, okay? <laughs> I could see somebody like, yeah, yeah you're not going to do that. <laughs> 
And she changed that up for me. And I'm glad she did. I'm glad she did. When I told my office manager what I was going to use for an outfit, she looked at me and says, it's a good thing you got Kelly. Being mature about it. Making sure we're presentable. Um, one of the things that people joke around about me a lot is, and I'm not great at everything, and I'm not great at many things, but I'm a, great, a, little, good at, a little good at a few things. I always got to have a clean truck. Now, let me explain. If you look at my truck right now, it's dirty with all kind of crud all over. It's winter in Minnesota. But I always got to have a clean truck inside. My, my truck, it just, I'm a neat freak like that, okay? And one of my friends one time, a very good friend of mine, we were heading up to the North Shore together. He got in for the fun of it, took a small bag of M&Ms and poured it right out on the console. Just smiled at me. <laughs> that was enough. I told him, I said, you know, you can walk up to northern Minnesota too. <laughs> because he knows that I like my truck clean. Standing out with godly appearance. It was just a joke he did, it was fine. But just little things like this is godly excellence. Little things like this. There's some things where we're going to shine amazingly because we develop those gifts that the Holy Spirit gave us and we use them and we take them and we run with them. There's some things we're not going to be so good at. You don't believe me? Ask Nancy Hef sometime how many times she hears me say in my office, I can't wait to get to heaven when I can spell. But we have others help us with those. And we do this, here's the key. I say it a lot, but I don't think I can say it enough. By reading God's Word daily. We don't read a whole chapter. We just read a couple of verses. And then we say, oh, good, that's done. No. We look at those verses and say, what does that mean to me today? How, what, how does that speak to me today? I just finished the book of Revelations in my daily devotions. I think now I've read through the Bible about six or seven times. I've lost count. But I just finished Revelations. And what I've learned since the month of late October, early November, December, and part of January, what I've learned is at the end, Christ is in control. And he's not going to judge us. He's not going to say, okay, you can go, you can't. You can go, you can't. He's going to say, I'm here because I love you and you're saved by grace and the kingdom of God awaits. Is this world coming to an end? Yes. Is that bad? You know, I... I'm going to die, all right? You all are going to die. We're not going to get away from that. But I want to go up to heaven because it's getting better and better every day. And it's getting grace-filled, not judgment-filled. Mercy-filled. Not some place where we decide who can and can't go. And it's getting a lot bigger every day. We apply what we read. If it just means a couple of verses, then so be it. And we think about it. Why did I need that today? Journal. Every Monday, I'm not perfect at it, I journal. I, I, okay, what does these verses mean? What's going on in my life this week? What do I need help from? And I look back at those journals. Someday Kelly has threatened that if I go before her, and she's pretty sure I'm going to, she's going to take all 20 of those journals and try to publish them. Good luck on trying to read them. <laughs> Looking at the prayer, the answered prayer in those journals, year after year, month after month, where God's glory was evident, living in God's excellence. The king assigned them daily portions of royal rations of food and wine. You know, Daniel lived by it, but when they had to make a stand, they did it quietly, and they went to the king, and they said, hey, this is what we'll do this is what you need to hold back on. They were to be educated for three years so that at the end of that time they could be stationed in the king's court. Here's the final part as we come forward. Choosing our battles wisely. Positive temperament. We don't go off on every single thing. If we did, we're going to have high blood pressure and a lot of ulcers probably die of an early age. We pick and choose wisely what hill we're going to stand on. Kerry preached a number of weeks ago, life's too short to hold grudges. Temperament. Daniel was in the king's court. He had every right to say, you know what? You don't have the right to do this to me. I'm out of here. No. He said, I'm in a good place. This can be an influence. 
I can help others. And we're going to learn how he picked his temperament. We're not great at it all the time, but it's a challenge this week. You know, we all have those people. You've heard me say it before. I'll say it again. We all have those people in our world we wish that would get transferred to Cleveland, right? <laughs> and God says, no, then they're not going to get transferred to Cleveland. If you ever go to Cleveland, let me know what you think of that place someday. We all have those people. We pick and choose our temperament, and we do it with prayer, scripture reading, journaling each time. Daniel's sitting on that court, and the first thing the king does is change all their names. Daniel could have said, you know what? You're not changing my name. He picked and chose his temperament. The palace master gave them other names. Daniel, he called Belshazzar. Hananiah, he called Shadrach. Michelle, he called Meshach. Azariah, he called Abednego. Pick and choose these things. And we pray about it with the scripture of the Lord. We journal and we grow in grace. Amen. I'm going to ask you to just join me in prayer as we prepare to come to this wonderful altar. Gracious Lord, we, we come before you because we do need you. We're just like Daniel and his, his companions. Our nation is the United States of America. Our culture is all over the board. And our social media, well, Lord, we have our own views of that. And we ask for your help. And we are called to live in the excellence of God. As we come forward, Lord, just, just open up our wisdom. And fill us with your salvation and your grace. We can pursue your holiness. In Jesus' name, Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm going to ask David to put a prayer confession up there. But before we go to that prayer, I want to remind us that we live in a house of God. That every single one of us is invited to this altar. There are no barriers. There are no rites of passage. There are no pretests. We just ask that you come forward like I do with a desire to follow Jesus Christ. Our communion servants are going to be honored to serve you. And we have the gift of music today from Patty Herzberg. As you come forward, please come by way of these side walls where we'll be honored to serve you. Take time to stand or kneel at the altar. If you need to, we can serve you in the pew. And just soak up the excellence of God's salvation. After much needed time of prayer, just... Go back by way of the center aisles. It's an opportunity to come to Christ. I lift it up to you in Jesus' name. The prayer of confession is specifically written to, to the fact that, yes, if you're like me, I ignore the excellence of God at times. And I need that salvation to pull me back. Let the words come alive as we pray it out loud with the power of the Holy Spirit. Join me. God of tender mercies, we admit that sometimes we don't know what to do with ourselves. We anger at the slightest insult and imagine great vengeance upon those who wronged us. We relax in good news of our faith and do not consider the deep commitment of faith. We care for ourselves, but, but not for others. Forgive us, we pray. Forgive us. Help us to repent. And make us whole in Jesus' name. Amen. Silently, with the sun beaming through those stained glass windows, let's listen to God's invite. Gracious Lord, we need you. Help us realize that. Help us come up because we love you. Not because someone's forcing us to do it. And help us find your grace and your forgiveness and the excellence of your love. As we come forward, Lord, help us know we are forgiven. 
we are forgiven, men and women and children of God. In Jesus' name, Holy Spirit, amen. At this time, I'm going to ask Patty and our communion servants if they would come forward. <coughs> This loaf of bread represents the holiness of God. The holiness of more than physical food, more than thank you for our need to be hungry and filling us. It's the hunger of our salvation. It keeps us from turning into a king that wants to just get rid of our vassals. It helps us understand salvation because it represents Christ's body willing to go to a cross and tell us we're forgiven even while his body is being broken in love for us. This is the body of Christ, broken in love for you and for me. This is not the end of the story. After he died, he rose. And if we choose to, we live also. Christ's body, broken in love. This juice represents Christ's blood. A man who was the Son of God and is the Son of God. And in humanity of his love, he went on that cross and those nails made him bleed. And as he was bleeding, we were able to taste the love of God. Yes, he died. Then he rose and he said, I love you. This is Christ's blood. Taste the love of God shed in love for you and for me as often as we choose to love him. Amen. Christ's blood shed for you, man. Christ's blood shed for you, Jesus. Christ's blood shed for you. Christ's blood shed for you. Christ's blood shed for you. Amen. Let's see. Why don't you two go over there? You and me are runner. Thank you. body and blood because he loves you. Christ's body and blood because he loves you, Joan. Christ's body and blood because he loves you, 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 Brian. Christ's body and blood because he loves you, Mary. Christ's body and blood because he loves you, Harlan. Christ's body and blood because he loves you, Donnie. Christ's body and blood because he loves you. Christ's body and blood because he loves you, 
Christ's body and blood because he loves you. 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 As we close in prayer, we're going to take a number of weeks and look at Godly Excellent. Next week, Dan Ziegler is going to address you guys. And we're going to continue to look at that and just kind of see how Daniel unfolds that all out. But let's remember, we are excellent because God loves us more than we could ever love God. And it is that grace and salvation that feeds the ability of excellence. Gracious Lord, thank you for this altar. It centers us. It grounds us. It makes, it, it makes us protect our vassals with our soul. And it gives us discipline because we need it for maturity. 
not because we're bad people or evil, it just helps us develop our perfection, Lord, our salvation. And so, Lord, we give it to you, and we ask for your help as we move through this day and this week. And we thank you because we love you. And you love us more than we could ever love you. And we are grateful in Jesus' name. And all of God's people say, Amen. We have the opportunity now for the gift of an offering. As the ushers come forward to the gift of music. Gracious Lord, we have many opportunities to express gratitude, and offering our tithe is one of them. We give to you because we do love you, and we want to express that love and pass it on, Lord. So let us be a church that is offering the salvations of the excellence of Jesus Christ to a world that is searching, to a community that is searching, from a church that is offering. In Jesus' name, Holy Spirit, amen. We're going to remain standing. We're going to join together that closing hymn, The Trees of the Field. The words are on the screen. Lord, we are not perfect, but perfection is in your grace, and that gives us the Holy Spirit and the wisdom of godly excellence. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Oh, there's...